डिफेंड धर्म प्रोटेक्ट धर्म सपोर्ट महारिषिका भारत धर्म यात्रा डोंट लुक अवे एनी मोर डोनेट जेनरसली टू डिफेंड द फ्रीडम ऑफ आवर बिलाविड सनातन धर्म स्कैन द क्यू आर कोड ऑन द स्क्रीन और क्लिक द लिंक बिलो Through my life, many women, either my aunt, girlfriends, where I have been devoted to in a silent way. It's like there was a loyalty to them, and I would have died for them. Matter of fact, is that all these women have cut off the relationships and never told me why. But I noticed that. Well, the more fearless you become, the less the old relationships will hold. And it's right now not about the old relationships, but a confusion inside of me because there was a fear of being loyal to you, surrendered to you, and being and you losing. You see, my place here is to point to you your final destination, which is the soul, which is actually the place where you where you go into total bending and allegiance. That's that's what the one who sits on the asana. The job of this person sitting here is to point you there. and you cannot lose that you cannot so everything else you lose is insignificant because somebody else replaces it when you have that that is the thing you have to go for yes and i know it was a confusion it's not about the old stories and it's not about but i that was holding me back to really surrender and open to you completely and it's not surrendering to me this is yeah. not the posture the posture is the readiness to surrender to the to the soul within to that mm-hmm. source the problem arises when that let's say the source is telling you don't open the door to your friend who just knocked on the door you have to be fearless enough to go with the truth where do you get that strength that is where the spiritual guide guru master is there because by pointing out the ego the readiness of that system to go with the truth is strengthened if the guru or the teacher is pointing out the ego because they want to torture you then the question to be asked is why what do they gain out of it it would be the other way around generally that they would gain more if they said nice things to you so the 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 work that is undertaken is to point out the ego so when you look at that and you see oh okay you don't have to spend your time looking at the ego that's the job of the of the spiritual guide because the ego is never going to go to its own funeral it's not going to do that like yeah kill me kill me kill me it's not going to say that so that's when the outside person comes in but the the connection the 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 deep deep connection which you hold on to is the truth within yourself and then what happens is you don't feel the dependence on the spiritual master when you don't feel the dependence on the spiritual master or guide or guru then you can have a strong guru shishya relationship it is only when there is dependence mm-hmm. that there is fear of loss 
You know, you know what I'm saying? Absolutely, I understand what you're saying. That is your so final destination. Uh -huh. Then you won't lose me mm -hmm. because you're not dependent on me, because you got your master in there. And the connection with the guru is, or with the guide or whatever language you speak and what words you use, is one of love, it's one of reverence because they have shown you yourself. It's one of friendship. Mm -hmm. You know, my grandmother, her guru was Shirdi Sai Baba. She had his big portrait in the house. She asked him for something and he didn't give it to her. And so she got really furious with him and she took his portrait and put it outside the house and said, you stay outside. You're not welcome in my house anymore. And that's the relationship with the guru. The guru is your friend. It's two people playing a role on a stage. One is the guru, one is the disciple. Each one stays in their domain and, and plays that role out to perfection. So then the rest of the family members said, what is this and how can you put his picture out? She said, I don't want him here. He's never doing anything for me. Let him stay outside, not come into my house. Then finally they convinced her and everything. And for a long time, she was like looking at him strangely and walking past <laughs> his portrait in the house. You know, he was so real for her. So that is the relationship also with the guru. It's not this idea that a lot of Westerners have that the guru is like impeccable and infallible and is like Jesus who was son of God. No, the gurus are sometimes less capable less spiritual, less pure than their disciples. There are many cases like that, where the, where the guru is just a, some wretched creature. Sometimes there are people who take up a guru who doesn't speak, doesn't, doesn't even look at them, just is lying on the road there and spit coming from their mouth. There have been people who have taken up some guru like that and they revere that guru it is about you, it is not about the Guru. Mm -hmm. That is Guru-Shishya relationship, not the idea of being a follower of Jesus, which is also an approach, but it is not a Guru-Shishya approach. It is a follower approach, the sheep and the shepherd approach. That is not Guru-Shishya parampara, that is not Guru-Vada. Guru-Vada is a very active back and forth thing between the guru and the shisha, it's fighting, it's arguing, it's charcha, it's, it's reverence, it's love, it's samarpan. It's a very human relationship. Mm -hmm. And yet, in the tradition of Guru Vada, the guru is seen as more powerful or more important to the shisha than God himself or God herself or God itself. So that is the other side of it. It's a very varied, multifaceted relationship and certainly not one where there's any dependence. The moment you feel dependent, you got to go within and hold on to the antar guru, the final destination, and then you will be able to have a, a, a powerful, and free relationship with the Guru. So when the Guru then points out the ego, then you're like, okay, let me listen to what is being said here. Because you're not afraid of being dependent. Understand? Absolutely. It relieves my system so much. <laughs> Understand? Yeah, it's a very free relationship, yeah. you know. It's, I mean, the, the Indians, they anyway never listen to what the Guru tells them. It's the Westerners who listen to everything and, and then, yeah, I mean, I have some Indian students, I tell them something in the morning to do one hour later, you can be sure that they won't do it. <laughs> so the relationship is not this strict and uh, heavy, and it's <laughs> lightness, lightness. <laughs> and, and if the guru is pointing out something, they anyway don't take it so seriously. You know, it's lightness, something is absorbed, 
something is left, again it's absorbed, again it's left. And yes, if the guru is a corrupt guru has done some, some crimes, then you have to rethink the story, but most of the time it's not like that. And yes, there is also that question of loyalty, certainly. And it's not a loyalty to the guru, it's a loyalty to your own relationship to the guru. You have to know. Nobody is going to be chasing after you, saying you have to be this and be that. It's not a religious setup. Guru Vada is not a religious setup. It isn't. So, you don't have to worry about it. We'll all be fine. Defend Dharma, Protect Dharma Support Maharishika Bharat Dharma Yatra Don't look away anymore Donate generously to defend the freedom of our beloved Sanatana Dharma Scan the QR code on the screen or click the link below